There's been this fantastic interview uh, recently. Yes. And I'm sure you've heard about it, but we wanted to give our commentary on this and we wanted to go through it quickly with you, at least some of the highlights. So to yeah. set this up, mm -hmm. there is a guy that works for the Chinese government. Uh, his name is Victor Gao. He's a very obnoxious human being. Well, we'll I think you'll... We've, you, put it, we've you had him on the show. Not as a guest. No, but we've had him on the show <laughs> when he was like, like threatening Australia because yeah. they were getting uh, nuclear powered submarines, yes. not nuclear yeah, armed. Yeah. yeah, just nuclear powered. Yeah, just submarines. nuclear powers. Yeah. Um, I, you guys can come up with your own conclusions, yeah. what you think about him. But he's interviewed by this guy. As named long Eddie. as you have the opinion that he's obnoxious. <laughs> yes, then you're, then you're <laughs> yes. allowed to stay. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, what they did was very mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. He came to represent China, and Mehdi was the debater. Mm -hmm. to bring up some issues that people have with China. Yes. And they had a panel. It was very reasonable, too. They had a Uyghur woman. Mm -hmm. They had a very mild critic of China. Very, I yeah. liked him a lot, by yeah. the way. And then they had a pro-China dude. Well, yeah. seemingly pro-China. He All his works seemed very sure. pro-China. Mm -hmm. And so they had a panel that they could bounce things off of yes. while he interviewed Victor, right? Yeah. Now, this was shocking, because it really, to me and to you mm -hmm. and to the Chinese diaspora that translated this and put it in Chinese online, I was reading through, really pulled the wool off of people's eyes about how the Chinese government actually operates. So we, we have some of the scenes from it. We, we'll commentate on it as it goes yeah, through. Yeah, and of course, this this originally comes from Al Jazeera, and we do have a link There's in the description below. if it you want to see it. Clearly, it's not one thing. China. Clearly, you're accepting by definition if you need to reunify it. They are doing their own thing. And why this obsession with Taiwan? You are a country of 3.7 million square miles, a population 60 times that of Taiwan, economy 20 times the size of Taiwan. Why are you obsessed with Taiwan? Why not just leave them be? In terms of defending China's sovereignty and uh, territorial integrity, any inch of land is not one inch too much. Any one single person is not one person too many. So we need to achieve reunification as Even president. though they don't want to be part of your country. 12% of the people of Taiwan say they want to reunify with China. 12%. Medi. You can't get more unpopular than that in that Medi, it's not up to the people in Taiwan to decide about the one China policy. You're very blunt in your disregard for people's views, freedoms, dignity. You say that you don't care about what they think. How do you feel about the fact that at least half a million, some say more, of your brothers and sisters are being detained in camps by the Chinese government? And the reason he's saying brothers and sisters is Victor Gao has said that Uyghurs are his brothers and sisters, you know? Imagine, mm -hmm. imagine. Mm -hmm. Being a member of the Chinese government, mm -hmm. well, at least working, previously worked for them and currently doing pro CCP stuff, and saying that the Uyghurs are your brothers and sisters yeah. because they are simply in China. I mean, how, what a slap in the face to Uyghur people that are currently locked up in these camps. I'd like for you guys to listen to what he says about the genocide. It's yeah. very interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, that's literally like the Nationalist Party, the architects of apartheid in South Africa saying, the Zulus are my brothers and sisters. Yes. You know? It doesn't make sense, <clears throat> right? Yep. They had made them their enemy. Yeah, right? exactly. Let's see. And that's 5% of the adult Uyghur population, one of the highest imprisonment detention rates in the world. Mehdi, the Uyghurs are a proud ethnic group, one of the 56 ethnic nationalities in China. The Uyghurs, as far as I'm concerned, are my true brothers and sisters. I know many of them. I travel to Xinjiang regularly, and I talk to many other Uyghurs. Now, if anyone is serious about accusing China of practicing mass injustice to the Uyghurs, give me the evidence. I just think did. Human Rights Watch say a half a million people detained over the years in recent you years. You keep quote Human Rights Watch, and I tell you... Do you know they where they got those numbers from? I don't know. Can I, I tell you? Know. I don't know. I thought you were the expert on You've been to Xinjiang. Know. You've spoken to Uyghurs. You never heard these numbers? I do not know where did they get the source. So of their the source quotation. is the Xinjiang High People's Procuratorate, uh, which has published its own statistics, Xinjiang official body, which says it's convicted 540,826 <laughs> people prosecuted in the region since 2017. <laughs> so if you weren't following that, <clears throat> Victor is asking for his source. Where are these half a million Uyghurs? Yeah. Like, you, oh, you're going to use Human Rights Watch? You're yeah. going to use Human Rights Watch? They're, they've been discredited. Yeah, where's the source of these numbers? And he goes, okay, do you know what the source is? 
the Chinese government. Yes. They published this. Yeah, exactly. They did it. Mm -hmm. It's from the procurator in Xinjiang. Yes. The CCP said, we imprisoned this many people and they were proud of it. Yeah, and those numbers are obviously massively downplayed. Yes. Yes. So more than that. But it's quite funny that he didn't know that his, those numbers came from his own government. I love mm -hmm. that that was used because everyone yeah. knows it's more than that. Yeah. But Mehdi cleverly used the actual government the figure, Chinese which government is downplayed, figure. like you said. Yeah. And you, he tried to refute it? Yeah, he did. He said those numbers aren't true, yeah. but it was his own government. Oops. Yep. Oops. Oops. Yeah, let's see what's next. Because this is a It shows you when you lie and lie and lie, and the yeah. government's based on lies, right? You get yeah. caught up in it because you have to, you're like, what, what did we say before? <clears throat> yeah. What did we say now officially? I don't not, even know. Not only that, they're not used to being challenged. Yes, that's the, true. The United Nations Office for Human Rights looked at satellite footage. They say 10 to 20% of the population. Amnesty estimates a million people in camps. Half a million is a conservative number. Mary, if you quote that organization, please be assured that that organization has been completely discredited for the false information they so every, come up with. So you, this, I love this game we're playing. You give, give me a source, I give you a source. They're discredited. They've no. said falsehoods. Mary, How can we, one thing, let me ask you a question. How many people are in detention in Xinjiang? You give me a number. Listen, if you look I'm at listening. Xinjiang... You give me a number. If you look at... Mm. I do not have the number. Why not? Yeah. Oh, hold on. You can't say it's not half a million and then say you don't have a number. I have a number. Let I have me, sources. Let How me, many people do you think are detained? Let me give you my reason. No, no, no. I go to Xinjiang a lot. I travel almost throughout Xinjiang. So they're your brothers and sisters. Xinjiang. You go there a lot, but yes. you can't tell me how many people are in detention? This you pause it. Yeah. This is so yeah. key. Mm -hmm. And this is actually, it's so funny. We had noticed that we were talking, this, talking about this before the show. Everything that Victor says in this interview yeah. lines exactly up with the state narrative of, and, and it's not surprising, but the state narrative we, sh we see out of the propaganda outlets, the shills, all those people, it's yeah. almost a verbatim yeah. when they say, oh, well, I've been there. I see it. I can yeah. see it with my own eyes. You can go there, buy the visa, buy, or you can get it. You don't need a visa. You can just go there and see for yourself, right? Yeah. And it's verbatim. They use these party talking points exactly to like to the audience and to this Medi guy thinking that this is going to work. It's ridiculous. It's like, oh, yeah, well, I mean, you can come look. Like somebody who's stolen something. Right. Oh, yeah, come look in my room. It's not there. But right. then if someone actually tries, they're like, wait, wait, no, wait. Don't, no, don't open that drawer. Yeah, it's like, no, you, okay, come into my room, but don't look in that corner. I didn't steal <laughs> your wallet. It's yeah. not in that corner. Yeah. You can I go look, look at the corner? corner? No. No. <laughs> it's not under that blanket in the corner. Yeah, exactly. You know what this is? And, mm. and it's crazy because people use to laugh in the, with this comparison when we used to make it, but it's how North Korea has their tourism industry. Yes. You go through your pioneer tours or whatever, and you go to Pyongyang, and mm -hmm. you go on a minded tour where you can't do anything on your own. Yeah. And you're allowed to go to certain areas, and you're yeah. corralled into certain areas, and it's a manicured, developed, artificial Potemkin life, mm -hmm. whereas the whole rest of the country is starving, they're yes. imprisoned, there is... There's medical forced camps. Labor it's terrible, it's right? Forced labor camps, yeah. Mm -hmm. Families torn apart, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. It's very similar to what happens in Xinjiang. And it's the same thing. Oh, go there for yourself. And you'll see what he says. He, he, Mehdi finally takes a bait and says, okay, yeah, let's, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens here. Okay. They are happier. They enjoy their life. They enjoy their Muslim practices and traditions. Listen. How many people are in detention, Victor? Mehdi. Let me be philosophical. No, don't be philosophical. If be numerical. Any, no. How many people are in detention? You said not to, if, no to if, half a million. How about, okay, let's let, let a quarter of a million. Let me, let me, let me finish my point. Nope. If you answer anyone, the question. You if, can't filibuster, if, Victor, on the show. If anyone <laughs> how many promotes people do you Xinjiang think? independence, they will be dealt with in Got court. it. How many of them are in court? How know. many in detention? A very small minority. So you don't have a number. You say they're all happy, but you won't let in independent investigators. You won't let in journalists to why go not? there. Why not? They're I, not allowed I to go be, there. I will be happy to escort you to Xinjiang. Really? Escort. I can make that promise. Really? I will speak to the Chinese government. Here's the problem. To the Victor, Chinese I don't embassy. want to escort. I don't want minders. I want to go freely. Will you allow that? I do not make that decision. Oh, Stephen, let me ask <laughs> you this question. I mean, how perfect yeah. is that, right? Yeah. When cornered, because this is the current thing, and I think this really has just flipped the tourism industry on its head. If anyone's paying attention to this, because yeah. China's narrative is that don't listen to Winston, don't mm -hmm. listen to Matt, don't mm -hmm. listen to any of these other people, especially don't listen to these millions of Chinese dissidents around yes, the world, yes. right? There's nothing bad happening here. Yeah, You can go there. And it's totally fine. And he says, okay, but I don't want minders. I don't want people to, to follow me around. Yeah. Can you make that promise? I guess no, it's not my decision. It's not my decision. Because you will be minded the I, whole time. I made a video. It's called uh, China's Genocide Theme Park. Yes. 
And there are certain parts in Xinjiang that everybody goes, the Urumqi Grand Bazaar. Yep. We mapped uh, it out, right? Yeah, Kashgar, yeah. ancient town, the Hotan Night Market. And those, there are four places. And those are the only places that foreigners are allowed to yep. go. And those are the only places you ever see. Yep. You know, you get this this huge plethora of these videos out there these days of people like, I went to Xinjiang and there's no genocide. But if you look at the places they go, it's always the same places. It's never to where the camps are, which, by the way, are thousands of miles, sometimes hundreds of miles away from where these these uh, tourist areas that they go Even to Even if are. they're one mile, yeah. would you know? Would no. you be able to go inside? Yeah. Would, there's plenty of exactly. satellite footage. There's that guy that smuggled the footage out and ran away to America, right? Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. plenty of evidence. There's hundreds, if not thousands of Uyghurs that have fled and told stories about what happened yep. that are still not in contact with their family members that are locked up, right? Yep. There is the whole Xinjiang police database that was hacked. Yep. And now we have thousands of police records for people that were arrested for reading the Quran, yep. sometimes children. Mm -hmm. So there's so much evidence in support of this. It's not even funny, yet China yeah. keeps saying, where's the evidence? Yeah, the so evidence is right in front of us. Yeah, where's the evidence? Come see it for yourself. Yeah. Only if you go to these very specific spots yes. where we can make sure that you cannot see anything bad going on. You know what a good, <clears throat> a good uh, analogy is? What's that? Imagine this. Mm -hmm. Imagine you're having a debate or an argument, right? And you tell me, that America's got a very bad gun violence problem. And you use statistics from the south side of Chicago. There's 40 yeah. shootings in a, over the 4th of July weekend, or whatever you say, right? Sure. And, and it's out of control. And I say, absolutely not. There is no gun violence in America. Yeah. And I can prove it to you. You know how? You're going to come to mm -hmm. my house in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Sure. And we're going to go around that area, around the retirement homes. And I'll show you there is zero exactly. gun violence. I will take you to the retirement homes and you will see that nobody is shooting each other. Correct. It's exactly the same thing. I use this argument all the time. Having lived in America now for five plus years, yes, um, I haven't seen mm -hmm. any gun violence and right. I haven't seen anyone shoot a gun. I've mm -hmm. barely even seen a gun unless mm -hmm. somebody's shown me their collection. Yes. You know, out in public, I've never seen a gun. Mm -hmm. I've traveled the whole country. Mm -hmm. I've been, I have literally driven coast to coast and we've traveled a lot mm -hmm. and we have a lot of friends who own guns and stuff, mm -hmm. but you don't see them. No. So this whole anecdotal evidence, like he's saying, I have Uyghur friends and I travel there often. That's BS anyway. Right? It's the same as me saying, like, I've never seen guns, therefore gun violence doesn't exist in America. Right, and you would never say that. Yeah, because I know it does. Yes. And that's because there's a open press. Yes. People can tell, you know. There's... Yeah, we did a poll here with our audience. Yeah. Remember, it was something like 80 or 90% of our audience, I can't remember, 80 or 90% of our audience has never seen a shooting. Yes. Right? But, and, but they believe that there's gun violence. Yeah, exactly. Because it's reported. Mm -hmm. It's Nick's the same thing. making a lot of promises tonight about me going to Xinjiang and Rehan going to Xinjiang. And everyone's going to be fine. How... How safe, how okay are you with visiting China? How, how free do you think you are when you go to China? When I go to China, and I haven't been for some time, I'm watched almost 24-7. There's always someone I can spot who's trailing me. So uh, I know when my hotel room is upgraded suddenly to a spacious suite, and I'm now in a place which is bugged. So someone who's a mild critic, and a scholarly critic like me, doesn't feel safe in China. <coughs> By contrast, I feel safer in Taiwan. Victor, when you hear I think that's so telling, by the way. This guy's mm -hmm. barely a critic, right? Yeah. Very mild critic. Professor. Yes. Wonderful. I looked up some of his work. Absolutely fantastic body of work. Um, it's funny because I think a lot of people think, well, China's not North Korea, at least, right? And we really are there. Mm -hmm. When you have a professor that's getting bugged in a hotel, for what? It's not like he's a... It's not like he's starting political movements. No. It's not like he's inciting riots and revolutions, right? Guy is a is a professor. Yeah. He's a scholar, right? Correct. So when he has to go to China for something, let's say it's a seminar or something, mm -hmm. and his room's getting bugged, what does that show you about the insecurity of the government? Sure. It's exactly. insane. I mean, that's Pyongyang. I mean, we were followed around. We know what it's like. Constantly. Yeah. For doing... For, Filming horses. Yeah, exactly. We had the PLA search us because we filmed horses. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, that's crazy. Hey, he doesn't feel that safe going to China, prefers going to Taiwan. When we talk about freedom of speech, for example, in China. I live in the United States of America, where I can say that Donald Trump is a, I don't know, hypothetically, an orange-faced narcissist. I also live here in the UK. I'm British. Here you have Rishi Sunak, the former prime minister, was called a pint-sized loser by a Labour politician. Um, 
No one in China has that kind of freedom to talk about their government, to talk about President Xi Jinping in that way. You can't say anything like that. You wouldn't dare say anything like that because you know what will happen to you when you go home. You know what will happen to your family. That's what China is. Mehdi, if you do anything, write anything, email or chat to your friends about taking anything action against, let's say, Prime Minister of Britain, That's President of the United States, I didn't say that. you'll be dealt with That's very swiftly. Victor, you're a master in of straw China, man. In That's China, master, I... he's a master of straw man. See, I changed yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, he changed it to like, oh, if you send emails about subverting the government, yeah. But nobody brought that up. No. Nobody said taking action against the UK. That's not what we're talking about. Yeah. It was so talking about criticism can... of the party and of the of the leadership. Yeah, exactly. You can you can call like King Charles a dumbass. Yes. You know? Yes. You can do that. You, you don't can... have to support him. You can't say Xi Jinping is a dumbass no. in, and this in is, that's the China. Point yeah. I said, Eat. I said Rishi Sunak was called a pint-sized loser. Would you call Xi Jinping a pint-sized loser? Maybe. Each country has different sensitivities in UK. So you're admitting you can't criticize you, the Chinese no, government? No, no, no. You can criticize the government if you are positive in your attitude. <laughs> You can criticize you're, the government if you're positive. Yes. Is that the new philosophy? No, if you can come up with your... You've got to come up with nice insults? Uh, no. What? <laughs> constructive <laughs> advice. Constructive for example, advice. For example, oh, I'm loving in this. dealing with the aging population, what should be the government do? What should this governor should do? But you can't what say the president's lied. He's a liar. Not me. You will be dealt with very swiftly in China. You cannot That's, say that. That is the most honest thing you've said tonight. Yes. Former foreign minister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's true. Uh, yes. At least he... You can't yeah. even say the leader is a liar. Yeah. Wow. I mean, and then he, at least you have a top government dude here mm -hmm. in this chat, here yeah. in this debate, saying you will be dealt with swiftly. swiftly. Yeah. And I'll, I'll give my thoughts on that when we wrap it up. We might as well finish Kim this Gung off. was removed sure. from his post and has not been seen in public since June 2023. A few months later, China's defense minister, General Li Shangfu, disappeared from public view for months, has now been expelled from the party, accused of corruption. That's at least two ministers that disappeared just in the last year. With apologies to Oscar Wilde, to lose one minister might be unfortunate. To lose two is careless, is it not? Do you know the point I want to make? This means China is really merciless in dealing with corruption of all kinds, even among the Your highest Your foreign ranks. minister and defense minister. Imagine Antony Blinken and Lloyd Austin just disappeared tomorrow. We don't know where they are. We've never seen them again. That's not normal, Victor. Listen, corruption is rampant How in China. How do we China. know they're corrupt? They just disappeared. Where's the trial? Allow Where's the trial, to finish Victor? my point. Corruption of all kinds yep. in China need to be dealt with. So where's with the trial? Mercilessness. So where's the trial? Where's the trial of the former foreign minister? We don't even know where he is. Mehdi, those things you don't know yeah. doesn't mean doesn't happen. Where is the trial for this man you're just accusing of corruption? Qin Gang was my good friend for more than 20 years. Where is he then? He is involved in corruption. Where is he? And he is dealt with very swiftly. Where is he, Victor? Regardless of He's your good friend. You don't know where he is. N regardless where of the is the former foreign minister of, of China? Tradition. This is not a hard question. We're not asking where Rehan's brother in the middle of Xinjiang is that you can dodge. Where is the former foreign minister of China who disappeared? And by the way, he wasn't accused of corruption. The spokesman came out and said he has health reasons. Then corruption came later, by the way. Where did he go, your friend? That means there is a process. And the process so The process is starts with one lie that he's ill, and then the next lie is he's corrupt. He may be ill. You never know. I mean, he's probably ill after he's been in a Chinese prison. He may like, be ill now. Um, yeah. <laughs> He may be ill now. Isn't that just an admission of... And it's, you, know? you know what's crazy is he says it with a bit of snark. Yeah, you can see. And it's his it. friend. Yeah, it's like, you may be ill now. His friend got disappeared. And mm. later he goes on to say, I'm glad these people are disappeared. It's, not, they it's not his more... friend. It's yeah. definitely, yeah. You know, I'm just, yeah. It's you not know, playing friend. by the books here. He's just what a he competitor yes. in, in that game. It's crazy. Yes. Yeah, you know, um, again, you can see how China works. Yeah. It's very opaque when it comes to the government. They're very happy to just disappear people and then make excuses, say, oh, it was a health problem, and then, no, it's corruption, because they, they just cannot be honest. Yes. You know? Yeah. They can't deal with anything in a proper way. Yeah, let's, let's see what but no, but, Exactly. But at least where is he? Gong lost his job Victor, because where is he? of his corruption. Last question. That's where, the point. Where is he? He's somewhere in China. You will never see him. <laughs> like, you, know, him the one how, you will never see him. How grim is that? Mm -hmm. He is, so by the way, just in case you didn't catch that, Ching Gang is the former ambassador to the US. Yes. I mean, this is not like a provincial level dude, right? No. And then the foreign minister of China. Yes. Like the top dog mm -hmm. that is supposed to represent China to the rest of the world, right? And vice versa. Mm -hmm. 
he's gone. Yeah, and you will never see him. He basically said you'll never find him. Yeah, you'll never see him. You'll never see him. So you'll never see him again. So there's, did they execute him? Did and he they... goes on to, he kind of, he kind of backtracks later. I didn't put it in there. He backtracks, he goes, he's among the 1.4 billion people in China. Like, oh, there's just so many people. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah, you. Yeah. That's 1.4 billion people. And no, it's not just him. There's many other people who have disappeared. The previous defense minister disappeared. The Ministry of Industry and Technology disappeared. The former Interpol president disappeared. In China, you just disappear if they don't like you. That's I'm, the rule of law in China. I'm so in fact, happy they disappear because if they keep doing their job, they will bring greater disaster to Be careful to what you wish for because everyone's watching this show. And if you get something wrong tonight, maybe you disappear. <laughs> that was like... <laughs> that as, is incredible. As snarky and funny as that is, mm-hmm. it's absolutely true. Yes. So many people, if they get something wrong, then they're gone. Yeah. That's how authoritarianism works, right? Mm-hmm. For example, you can be in the leader's inner circle, like Ching Gang, yeah. right? Very much on the right team. He what was on the Hu right Jintao? team. Yeah, but I'm saying that's, yeah. that's the wrong team, right? Yeah, the wrong team. Ching Gang mean... was in the right team. Yeah. He's gone. Yeah. He did something happened, right? Got caught out doing something you know. or, you know, just You don't fell even know. You could favor. just be on the wrong thing, wrong yeah. place, wrong time. Yeah. You know? Said the wrong thing, you know, yep. spilled a glass of water on the table. Who, Who knows? knows? Right. Mm-hmm. This is a great one. My question is, as a dissident from Hong Kong, knowing that I cannot express freely in Hong Kong or in the UK without risking other people in trouble, I also know that you just now made claims about there's free speech in China, and it's possible to criticize the Chinese government just now again. Can you please demonstrate that free speech and tell us? What are Xi Jinping's two worst mistakes in the past five years? Great question. If you can demonstrate to us that it's okay to criticize Xi Jinping, the Chinese government, and China, or even just say Xi Jinping kind of resembles Winnie the Pooh, would be good enough for me. Thank you. All right, can you pause Great. it there real quick? I wanted yeah. her, I think her first question is excellent. Because yes. Her second think, question is a bit lame, but yeah, the first, yeah. It's kind of played out. But yeah. the first question is fantastic because it wasn't inflammatory. Can you name two things that the president, or the, sorry, the His leader two, of yeah. China... I don't like to say president. Yeah. The leader, he wasn't elected. No. The leader of China, you don't like, that you don't like about. Yeah, it was right? basically two wrong. failures. Two failures, right? Yeah, what are his two biggest and failures over any, the past? Any person in the entire world that lives in a free country will, even if you love the leader, even if you respect the leader, will absolutely find some things wrong. My yeah. grandpa loved Ronald Reagan, right? Mm-hmm. He can absolutely probably name 10 things that he thought were of failures course. of his. Oh, his you one get, policy didn't work out well. or You get you people know. that think Bill Clinton was the greatest modern president, but they will absolutely find things that Monica he, Lewinsky, you know. Or anything else, <laughs> sure. right? It may be policy failures, right? Yeah, he plays a saxophone. That's yeah. That's right. uh, That would be one of my things. <laughs> that was one of his biggest Tell yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, he anyway. played that clip, little known fact. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My point being, mm-hmm. I think this is the greatest question you can ask because anybody in their right mind should be able to come up with a couple things. Yes. Yeah, so again, they were like, what are Xi Jinping's failures? Yes. Do you want to take that question? Well, thank you. I would say uh, China need to make more prompt, uh, take more prompt actions in dealing with the dramatic... China. Uh, aging population in China and the dramatic uh, demographic decline. Do you think Xi Jinping's to blame for not being fast enough on aging? No, I think uh, the whole Chinese government, <laughs> including oh, the Xi central... Jinping. Yeah, he can't answer He can't. It. He so can't do it. He didn't he say China. Xi Jinping. He said, Chi- I think China needs to do this mm-hmm. and that. And he said, no. He actually, it goes beyond yeah. that. He said, no, not yeah. Xi Jinping. Not Xi Jinping. Not him. Yeah. No. He said, yeah, no. Yeah, because he's, oh, do you think Xi Jinping's no. the reason? He's like, no. The whole Chinese government. Uh, committee state council, uh, local government need to take actions quickly to reverse that dramatic uh, aging population problem and demographic... Okay. De- We're not going to get a criticism out of you. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to get a criticism out of you. He knows it. He can't do it. No. You can't do it. So if you've got... And the, this Victor Gao guy, this obno- he's obnoxious. I'm sure you agree with me now, by the way. If you're watching this, he's an obnoxious maybe, man. Maybe he- so you got some rare fans out there. Yeah, you know, like when like, you watch wrestling, people watch wrestling, some people root for the heel. You're like the evil enemy. the evil guy, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he's obnoxious. But he's high up in the government. Yes. Okay, he's very it's high about up. As he high used as to goes. Yeah, he used to be Deng Xiaoping's translator. That's right. So he previous, actually had some yeah. fantastic takes and great policy. Long time ago. Yeah. The thing is, he's high up in the government and he can't even criticize one thing that Xi Jinping Not done. one thing. Not one thing. Nope. And Xi Jinping's made a lot of mistakes. I liked earlier when he said, you can't even say 
Yeah, he's a liar. leader's a liar. Yeah, he didn't you say will be some dealt obnoxious with swift, thing swiftly. like he's ugly or something. Yeah. Oh, I think he's a liar. I, he lied about this. You're yeah. done. You're yeah. out. You will be dealt with swiftly on a personal level if yes. you say that. Yeah. That's and crazy. And your family. Yes. Mm. He never denied the family thing. No, never. All right. Let's see. This is a Tibetan over here. Yes. Tibetan refugee fled Tibet. The question is, Tibet, after 74 years of Chinese rule, is still under lockdown. No journalists, no individual tourists, no, okay. even Tibetans are not allowed to see their families. What is China afraid of to deep, keep Tibet in such a tight control and Tibetans in such an inhuman existence in our own country? Sir, ever since the Yuan Dynasty, if not even earlier, Tibet has been part of China. Through different dynasties, different historical periods, I can assure you, during your lifetime and mine, Tibet will always be part of China. Why are you so therefore, insistent therefore, on ruling places that don't want to be ruled by China? No, no Tibet well, is part of China. We've been through Tibet, China. Taiwan, they're not happy in Xinjiang. Tibet being part of China I'm doesn't Mongolia. depend on whether you like it or not. It's a megatrend of our time. A megatrend. And you need to accept that a before megatrend? you will feel free to go back to China. It's five to you you don't visit know. Tibet. You sound like you're threatening the man. No, I'm not. <laughs> You said you have to accept that before you can go back. You live he's in from peace. that place. You live in peace in Britain, that's good. But he's a refugee. But if you want to go back to Tibet, acknowledge Tibet is part of China, period. And what if he doesn't? He can't go back to his home. You cannot go back. <laughs> because China doesn't want to see anyone advocating for the independence of Tibet. Why can't no China... No way, there will ne that will never Victor, happen. Victor, why can't China... <clears throat> rest on its own merits. Why the bullying and the threats? We're going to break you to pieces, Taiwan. You can't go back until you sign this document or that declaration. Why the insecurity? Second biggest economy in the world, major power. You sound so insecure. China security rests on the principle that there is only one China. And Taiwan is part of China, Tibet is part of China, and Xinjiang is part of China. Period. And even if the people there don't want to be part of it, you don't give a damn. The majority of the people live happily as Chinese How do we know? citizens. Did you do a vote? I will go with you <laughs> oh, to we're gonna, Tibet. We're going to go to Tibet and, and we're going to talk to all the Tibetans. And I can go to Taiwan. Tibet, but the guy who's from there can't go there. You sound ludicrous when you say this stuff, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> My question to you, sir. What's the Chinese government trying to hide from us? He's a weaker. Yeah. Second, okay. why can't we... Why can't we not talk freely with our families. Okay. Another, yet another Uyghur. So many Uyghurs, the same story, the same questions. I'm always very happy to see wherever I go a Uyghur person, because I do consider the Uyghurs as my brothers and sisters. On one condition, a though... Part of me is starting to feel sorry for your actual brothers and sisters. No. On, one, <laughs> on, one, on one condition, though, Uyghurs need to acknowledge that Xinjiang is part of China. That's a big precondition. If you do not accept so that on, precondition, hold on, hold on. you are not my brother or sister. Hold on, so he co that's fine. You don't have to be brothers and sisters, <laughs> but can he not talk to his family? It depends on where your family is. <laughs> there are indeed Uyghur separatists who want to promote separatism of Uyghur, turn oh, But uh, what about of, uh, the people who are not separatists who just disappear? Turn Xinjiang into East Turkmenistan. This Turkestan. will never mm, happen. Get that, right? Listen to this. Call your friends to stick to the one China policy. He just wants to talk on the phone to a family member. He can't call oh. his friends. No, he can't. He can't, he can't. And the reason is he wants to contact his 82 year old mother. Yes, do you think she's a separatist? How many people in the Xinjiang police files, if you go through the police records on the internet, you can go to the mm -hmm. website right now, how many of those people are separatists? Yeah. The vast majority of them are not. Correct. They were not arrested for being separatists. Yes. So he's full of shit. Yeah, he is. Let's see what this guy said. I need to speak to my mother. I want to speak to my mother. I am British Uyghur. I want to speak to my mother. Do you understand? Literally, China support China. one China policy, I support Victor. Xinjiang being part of China. Victor. Period. Can you Do pause you that? The yeah. imagery of this guy crying, mm -hmm. like looking up, right? Mm -hmm. Red in the face, looking up. I just want to talk to my mother, who's been it, disappeared in China. Yeah. An 82 year old woman. Yeah, for years. He's speaking up, and then a Chinese official dude looking down and pointing, you have to acknowledge the one China policy. You know what I yeah. mean? How sick is that? It's pretty bad. It's bad imagery. It's bad imagery, yeah. 
have no heart to see this man who can't speak to his 82-year-old mother. No, is I she a separatist? Your, your, I wish your mother is here in this hall talking to you. And uh, why don't you let her go? Her, so then she, maybe you know? she could. But then, on one condition, in China, zero tolerance of any separatist movement. An 82-year-old woman Anyone? is a threat to China. What does that say about China? I hope she is not a separatist. But if she is a separatist, she will be dealt with by law. Period. <laughs> I mean, he, he's just like... He just, doesn't even know. No. I hope she's not, because if she is, she'll be dealt with. Perry. Not like, I'm so sorry what happened to your mother. I'll see what I can do. Let's move on. Yeah, it's, it's just a threat. He, he started yelling at him. Yeah, yeah. This it's poor guy. It's pretty bad. It's so weird. This has got to be the worst PR I've ever seen for the CCP. I, in, in the history of what when we started looking at like mm -hmm. what the Chinese government was doing, yeah. this is the worst PR I've ever seen. Well... Again, this has really just lifted the veil, so to speak, because so many and, and anyone who has been in this sphere, who's been following us, yes. has been following the whole crazy China yeah. YouTube thing, would have seen over the years these useful idiots that have been um, defending the way yes. China behaves, defending uh, the, the whole Uyghur situation, mm. you know, on behalf of the CCP. And they always try to put a Western slant on it. They always try to make it seem as if it's uh, it's necessary and it's good or whatever, you know? They, yes. they make a floral story out of it. Yeah. But in the end, from the horse's mouth, from the Chinese official here, you can see that that is not the case. It is a brutal crackdown. They really don't care about people's families. No. They don't care about... They're not humane. No. You know, they're not compassionate. This was exactly, you know what this undoes? What? This undoes the billions, and I'm not kidding when I say the B, the billions yeah. of dollars that they put into their um, Tell a Good China Story campaign. Yes. Jiang Hao Zhong Guo Gu Shi, a billion, multi billion dollar campaign from the CCP. Yeah. To tell China's story to you, to make you like the Chinese government, and to paint like a rosy picture of the authoritarian situation in China, yeah. this literally undoes all of that. All of that, because it's, if you watch this, you go, okay, okay, this is actually how it works. Yeah, exactly. This, this isn't some facade of like a, a white dude in China saying, "Look at how amazing it is." This is yeah. the Chinese. Look, the government. Uyghurs are happy; they're dancing. Right. This is the Chinese government that just said how it is. Yeah, right? exactly. Let's see how he concludes this, and then we'll give a, give you our final thoughts. Okay, sure. Victor, before we finish, I have one question for you. We're in the UK. We're in Conway Hall, historic free speech society. Could we do a show like this? Could I interview you like this? Could Rehan come be on a panel like this in Beijing, in, say, the Beijing International Convention Center? Could we do a show like this? Audience members freely ask questions. You take questions from everyone. No one's vetted. No one's threatened. Could we do this in Beijing? Mehdi, if you ask me to line up all the support, you will do that. Really, I can assure you that. A show where every audience member gets to speak freely. No one turns up at their house afterwards. For many European countries, you do not need a visa to go to China. Pick up your luggage no, and I'm not buy asking, a ticket. I'm not asking Fly foreigners. Victor, I'm not asking foreigners to come. I'm saying, could a Chinese audience turn up and ask whatever they want, criticize Xi Jinping, criticize the government, ask you questions, talk about Uyghurs? Could you do it in Beijing? Mehdi, in China, don't criticize our president. So we couldn't do this show. Unless you well, have glad you a very the positive, constructive proposal to make. From the, criticism from the horse's mouth. The, don't criticize unless criticism it's positive. Criticism is not the only goal. Criticism with constructive free purposes is a goal. will be a better free speech. Free speech is a goal we cherish on this show. A better free speech. I'm glad to have speech. offered you a platform for spe free speech. I wish you could offer me one back. Yeah. I, I love the ending of that. But um, I, I like that he says a, a better free speech is if you can only say well, positive things. Well, you know that is not free speech. Well, you know what that so tracks, though, doesn't it? What yeah. does this track with? This tracks with when China says that they are a true democracy in America. Yeah, not, yeah, exactly. Right? They're it's like, because well, it's their version. They say whatever they want. process people's <laughs> yeah, democracy. Yeah, they, they just put on like a freaking mm. like cooler ranch Doritos <laughs> freaking like nacho cheesiest version of democracy and then yeah. they just say it. and they, you look up any statistic and china ranks like nine out of a hundred yes. sorry nine out of they get a nine out of a hundred freedom score they rank like 157th on the freedom charts out sure. of like 158 countries i know, you know it's know? crazy it's, like, it's bad yeah right? it's very bad but if you don't look it up china can throw these buzzwords out there and you're supposed to believe it yeah now we were talking about this i don't know if we we ended up agreeing on it but people are watching this interview saying owned uh 
look, they just got screwed. They're going to regret this interview. They're going to regret all this stuff. And I, like I said, I think it undoes billions of dollars of PR. I think I, it's a, I, Hopefully it's this horrible. has woken up a lot of people who are on the fence. Yeah. And maybe the people that have been following these horrible, obnoxious people that are trying to sing China's praises and the, the CCP's praises all the time mm -hmm. without criticizing them. And also, this should really wake people up to one thing. Every single YouTuber, and I'm saying this because we're on YouTube and this is the sure. format we're on. Every single YouTuber that currently resides in China making videos about China may not criticize China. Mm -hmm. That's the thing you can take from this. Yeah. You saw how quickly he was, uh, how, how quickly he shut down any attempt of criticism. Mm -hmm. And if you live in China and you're making videos about China and saying, look, it's so amazing. Look at the high speed rail. Look at the flashy cities at night. Look at all this. There's a reason why it's only positive, positive, it's allowed. positive. That's allowed. That's the only thing that's allowed. If they were to even start to criticize China, especially the government, if they mm -hmm. were like, hey, the government policy is really screwed up over yes. here, or what the like government the did, you know, like look at these homeless people here, or stuff. look at the, to whatever, they would be dealt with. Yeah. swiftly like like victor said yeah and that's why you cannot trust any china-based youtuber to be telling you the truth or an objective truth only the only thing they can show you is a a rose-tinted bullshit version of china right and this this actually goes way beyond that too yeah this was my takeaway from this as mm -hmm. chuckly as it is and it's funny to see like a ccp dude get owned and mm -hmm. blah, blah blah everything is exposed all this kind of stuff right these buzzwords yeah I think this is much grimmer than that because mm -hmm. the takeaway for me when I finished mm -hmm. this was that China doesn't care that that stuff was necessarily put out there. That's mm -hmm. the state policy. I think it does do a lot of negative PR and they're going to be pissed off about that part. Yeah. But if they can say this, if he can go through this whole interview and not backtrack and really just drive all these really grim points home, that means that is their policy. That's that all, that yeah. is what they do. Exactly. This isn't opinion anymore. This is like a playbook, right? Yeah. And if China can show their playbook and continue to operate like that, yeah. then I think, and, and no one's doing anything, anything about it, like mm -hmm. countries around the world aren't going to do anything about it. They still want to cooperate. Yeah. Then it kind of shows you how screwed everything is. Yes. Because you can't show your playbook and how horrible it is and then just continue to operate like that. Yeah. Right? So this was like, to me, this is scary if anything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, hey, at least the uh, veil has been lifted. People can see and yes. make up their mind for themselves. I don't know. <laughs> I love you, love you, love you. <laughs> I love you, love you, love you. <laughs> He's like He's stumbling so around wobbling. drunk. It's the the insignia. Nazi insignia. They love that too. Means. It's like... Dude, you probably shouldn't have that on your car. It's so bad. It's literally like if you took confetti and threw it at someone. <laughs> like, I feel like it's aimed specifically at Chinese women of a certain age. <laughs> You're so right, dude. <laughs> really, really, really want to play in China. Please, we love China, please. Yeah. Oh. This is fried squid and savory items with Oreos in the crust. I, I just can't find a sandwich. <laughs> what the hell? It's like you almost want to like commit suicide or something at that point because <laughs> you can't find a freaking sandwich. Take a breath, you fill up my lungs. Uh, and if my mind